Content warning. Disturbing images, language, and incidences will be used and discussed. The mass detention of migrants and refugees is a fact of our political reality. Most of us at this point are used to hearing about the immigration crisis on our southern border or have seen horrifying images of migrants trapped in ICE detention centers. Given all of the lies and all of the noise, it can be hard to keep track of what exactly is happening at our southern border. Never Again Action Tennessee is here to help. Welcome to Never Again Action Tennessee University, a political education series brought to you by your friends at Never Again Tennessee. Let's start with the facts. The United States government has detained hundreds of thousands of refugees and migrants. This has mostly been managed by the Department of Homeland Security, which includes Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, and Customs and Border Protection, or CBP. Immigration detention is the practice of incarcerating immigrants while they await processing in the United States. In 2016, the United States government detained nearly 360,000 people. In 2018, that number grew to 396,000 people. On any given day that year, the United States held more than 42,000 migrants. Immigrants in detention include both undocumented and documented individuals. It includes asylum seekers, it includes children, and it includes the survivors of torture and violence. Most of the news coverage has focused on Latin American immigrants fleeing violence in their own countries. However, this is a crisis of a global magnitude. DHS has detained migrants from all around the world. Immigrants who find themselves in detention are often subject to harsh conditions and inhumane treatment. These facilities are not only dirty and cramped, but DHS staff are often incredibly cruel to their detainees. At the Northeast El Paso Detention Center, a group of mothers were separated from their children for over 50 days. Migrants at the same center were subjected to constant psychological torture and were routinely denied showers and medication. Children at the Clint facility were stripped of toothpaste, soap, and showers. Young infants were often forced to wear dirty diapers for days. More than 207 people that we know of have died in DHS detention. Migrants in DHS detention are especially vulnerable during the COVID-19 crisis. Already, over 300 ICE detainees have tested positive. Close conditions and a lack of medical treatment means that tens of thousands of people could die. This is true across the board for all individuals experiencing incarceration or detention. Rikers Prison in New York City is already experiencing the highest per capita COVID-19 spread in the world. To add insult to injury, the dehumanization of immigrant lives makes millions of dollars a year. DHS does not hold all of these migrants in their own centers. Rather, they contract out to local county jails and private prisons run by companies like CoreCivic and GeoGroup. Over 200 immigrant jails currently exist in this country. The incarceration of black and brown lives is incredibly profitable, and the private prison complex is only growing stronger. This but scratches the surface of the cruelty of the United States immigration system. We have on our hands a humanitarian crisis of unprecedented magnitude. It is being committed by our own government. This isn't an accident. The system is designed to be cruel. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, what the fuck is going on? How the fuck did we get here? That anger is completely justified and righteous. The sad reality is that the United States has an incredibly long history of violence against immigrant and ethnic slash religious minorities. U.S. sponsored cruelties like the treatment of Chinese immigrant railway workers or programs like Operation Wetback litter our history books. Our immigration system, however, became the carceral entity that we know today in the mid 80s as the Reagan administration ramped up the war on drugs. In the 90s, the Clinton administration cemented detention as the primary method of immigration policy enforcement. In 1996, legislation was enacted that made any non-U.S. permanent resident liable for deportation and incarceration. 
Tonight's Eye on America focuses on illegal immigration on a day when the U.S. Senate approved a major election year overhaul of immigration laws. Key provisions would double the size of the U.S. Border Patrol, speed up deportation of illegal immigrants, and impose stiffer penalties for helping them get jobs or documents. One provision to deny public education to children of illegal immigrants was dropped from the Senate bill. It is still in the House passed version. House and Senate negotiators will decide later whether it's in the final bill. Shortly after the 2001 World Trade Center attacks, the Department of Homeland Security, ICE, and CBP were created. The Bush, Obama, and now Trump administrations have used and expanded these institutions to destroy migrant communities via raids, deportations, and detention. The cruelty we see now is the result of decades of racist and xenophobic immigration policies by all presidents, Democrats, and Republicans. No one is innocent here. This is where Never Again Action comes in. We are an organization led by Jews and immigrants dedicated to the dismantling of ICE and the entire migrant detention system. We see terrifying parallels between the untold horrors of the Holocaust and the violent treatment of modern migrants and asylum seekers. We are committed to the memory of those we have lost and to the prevention of any further violence upon vulnerable communities. In solidarity with other immigrant justice organizations, we are demanding that all detainees and all prisons be released. We demand that ICE and CBP be abolished. We demand the creation of a humane and compassionate immigration system. We can do this. None of these systems exist outside of us. DHS is only 20 years old. Our immigration system and prison industrial complex are not a given, but rather something that was imposed upon us. If we fight hard enough, organize efficiently, and use our collective power, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. We have to fight, and we have to win. There are too many people counting on us. Today, we are asking you to join us. Please reach out to your local Never Again chapter, reach out to your local community action groups, and get involved in the fight for immigrant justice. Never Again is now.